Hi, this is Hunter with Small Arms Combatives. Uh, this is part four of the learning cycle. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about stress uh, and stress tests and where those uh, stress tests uh, start. So if you haven't seen uh, parts one, two, and three of the learning cycle video, please go back and watch all those and then come watch this part four video. Uh, I did not put the, uh, the chart on this video. I'm just talking. Uh, but what I did have was that introduction to this video where you see the guy shooting, uh, bang, 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 and then all of a sudden uh, he has a click and set up a bang. And what we were doing is malfunction drills. So, you know, we bring the pistol back, we tap, we rack. Okay, if you notice that it, it locks back whenever he does his tap rack, then you see the student looking at the gun. Uh, he does this, tap, and then looks, okay? Um, so why you need training? First of all, your training needs to, to give you some kind of stress. It's stressing your abilities, putting stress in that training class so that you can, uh, you know, learn your way towards mastery under some types of stress. Um, if, if you haven't mastered, okay, the skills that you learn under any kind of stress, then those skills cannot be replicated in a violent confrontation, uh, when, when you're in fight or flight mode, okay, because you, you don't think the same way, uh, that you do, uh, you know, when you're calm, okay. Uh, you, you don't you don't think the same way, and so you'll do the same thing. You when when something on your gun hangs up, or there's some kind of problem with it, uh, you'll look at it like that. Okay, and instead of looking at the gun, looking at it ain't gonna fix it. Uh, do what you're supposed to do. Do what you were taught in training, and and get that pistol back running again. Okay. Now of course malfunction drills and tap racks that 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 ain't all that encompasses in a uh, firearms training course. Okay, you have to take a course to uh, a real course to figure that out. Um, but uh, anyways, um, let's talk about stress now. Okay, um, if if all you've ever done is stand in front of a paper target and point at it. Okay. You might not even do that in a real confrontation. If you haven't stressed yourself, okay, uh, in training, or if, if the trainers haven't added any stress to the training, in other words, uh, there's movement, they get you to say and do things uh, while you're training, um, or, you know, induce malfunctions on that pistol, uh, you know, those, those are some types of things, um, getting you to think, okay, while you're training. Um, if you haven't actually replicated those things in your own practice, like you, you get a timer, uh, and time yourself on the drills. Uh, when you go to a training class, you're supposed to take a pen and paper with you and, and write down exactly, you know, the stuff that you do. Uh, that way you can take that back and practice it. Remember, the purpose of training is to teach you what you need to be practicing and showing you how to do that. Um, and so um, the what you practice, okay, if you haven't ingrained those skills, okay, then you, you won't do it in a violent confrontation. Um, you will go back to the skill level that you have mastered uh, in the real thing, okay? Um, so the pathway to mastery is making everything that you do with that pistol more autonomous. I know a lot of you haven't even mastered the grip. And the first thing you're supposed to do when you draw a pistol uh, the right way is to have a solid uh, firing grip on that pistol before it even comes out of the holster. But many of you haven't even been to a real firearms training course um, where you, you haven't even been taught, you know, how to draw from the holster from concealment properly. Your instructor probably had their shirt tucked in and, um, you know, 
uh, outside the waistband pistol like they were a cop or something. But anyways, I digress. Um, so uh, training with some type of stress. Um, that's why I mentioned, uh, you know, in the learning cycle, uh, your stress tests, uh, you know, force on force, the paint barking rounds, that's as close as it gets to you being in a real gunfight without you actually being in a gunfight. Um, the point of that is, and, and giving you stress during training and practice and force on force training, um, the, the point of that is so that in your mind, you have been there before, so that if you have been there before and you've experienced that type of experience, then you will react faster. Your reaction time will be faster. And if you didn't have um, a firearms training class that taught much about reaction time, uh, which that is one of the first things that we talk about in, in our class here, it, when we open up the day is, is your human reaction time uh, and, and under stress and all that kind of stuff, you probably didn't train in the right place. But uh, anyways, um, the point is that if, if you've trained and practiced under stress, okay, then you in your mind have been there before so you know how to react to it quicker, okay? Uh, if you're interested in taking some quality pistol training, uh, you know, come visit us at our page, Small Arms Combatives. Um, check us out there and uh, click that sign up for classes button so your full course schedule. Uh, everyone have a great day over and out.